So before we get into today's video, I got kind of a funny story. Me and my wife were gonna go out for a Valentine's Day dinner, and I was gonna wear this to the dinner. Now I think this kind of looks casual, but still nice. And she thought I looked like a soccer dad. So either way you look at it, I've made it. I've made it to the soccer dad stage. So while I might not have a good taste in clothes, I at least know what it looks like to be a dad. I think that means I'm gonna be a pretty good dad. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into the main point of the video, which is eight expert tips to end your weekend weight gain for good. Now, before we jump right into the actual tips themselves, it's really important to understand that that five, six, seven pound weight gain that you got over the weekend, it's not all body fat. In fact, very little of it is actual body fat. And that's because a lot of the things we eat over the weekends do two things to our weight. They increase water weight and they obviously increase food volume weight, which is the food that's in your digestive system. Let's face it, we all eat more food on the weekend and we typically eat foods that are higher in sodium and carbohydrates. As I mentioned before, this can lead to weight gain in the form of water and food volume. Just to be very clear, this is not fat weight. All right, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right into the tips. Tip number one, when you go out to eat on the weekends, know what you're going to order before you get to the restaurant. Doing so can help you manage exactly what you're going to eat. This doesn't mean you can't get your favorite foods and you have to order a salad. It just means you wanna be aware of the amount of calories you're going to consume at the restaurant. And no, I don't mean putting everything in your MyFitnessPal and figuring it all out like that. I just mean have a conscious awareness of how many calories your meal is going to have, as well as all the other food that might be at the table, like the bread basket or the chip basket. Here are a couple of tips that I've used in the past that go along with the same subject. Sometimes what I'll do in the beginning of my meal is order a salad or a soup. Sometimes your meal might even come with it. The reason why this is important is because you're very unlikely to overeat salad or soup because they give you a predetermined portion whereas a bread basket or a chip basket is gonna come endlessly. So you could pretty much eat as much as you want, get full on that, and not even have room for your actual meal. Another tip that's helped me a lot in the past is when you finally get your entree, eat your protein serving first. It doesn't mean you have to eat all of your protein before you go onto the carbs or anything else. It just means eat the majority of your protein first. The reason why this can help is when you eat protein, your brain essentially says, hey, this person's eating protein. Protein is very filling. Let's start telling them that they're gonna get full pretty soon. This can help a lot with overeating because usually overeating is a result of eating foods that digest very quickly and that are extremely tasty that sort of mess with our satiety signals in our brain. So eating your protein, or at least the majority of your protein early on in your meal can help you feel full earlier on into the meal, which again, helps with overeating. All right, tip number two, get a workout earlier in the day. So you might be the kind of person who works out during the week and doesn't work out on the weekend, but I would suggest something different. Move one of those workouts to a weekend day. While there's nothing magical or special about doing this, it might actually help to regulate your appetite on the weekend. Now, before we go any further, I don't want you to think that working out is gonna offset the amount of calories you're going to eat later in the day. That's not the point of getting a workout in. The point of getting a workout in is to help keep a regular appetite throughout the weekend. It's not an excuse to eat more calories or to push the calories towards your muscle mass, although that would be pretty cool. It's about finding some sort of rhythm and helping regulate your appetite over time. Having a consistent workout schedule in general will help regulate your appetite. So sometimes moving one of those workouts to the weekend can help with this entire process. Again, this isn't a magic bullet or a cure-all. It's just a strategy you can use to try to change things up. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, don't stress over it. Tip number three, eat sweets and other foods that you would leave for the weekend during the week. Wait, what? How does that make sense? You're literally telling me that I should eat things that I would normally only save for the weekend during the week. But that's not clean eating. Exactly. Clean eating as an entire mindset is absolute bullshit. There is no such thing as clean eating, unless you're comparing it to eating food off the ground versus eating food that hasn't been on the ground. You gotta stop this good versus bad mindset when it comes to food or this clean versus dirty food thing. It's only making your relationship with food worse. And anytime you have a bad relationship with food, it's gonna be very hard to stay consistent with anything that you do for your fitness journey or your body composition goals. So yes, eat some of the things you would save for the weekend during the week. If you wanna have Cheetos with lunch on a Monday, do it. If you wanna have chocolate on a Wednesday night, do it. If you wanna have a donut on Friday because Susie brought them in, do it. When you don't banish certain foods to the weekend, you have less anxiety about eating them because they don't become scarce. And when a food becomes scarce, you have an obsession with it. And we don't want food obsession. All right, tip number four, make solid food choices earlier in the day. So you might be thinking that 
in order to eat the kinds of foods you eat at restaurants that are high in calories, that you need to fast the entire day or eat very, very low calorie foods in order to save those calories for later in the day. Here's the problem with that. It doesn't address a normal person's appetite, which is the more you restrict, the stronger the appetite grows. So a better strategy is having solid food nutrition earlier in the day of whatever day you're gonna go out to eat. So in the morning, make sure you have a fiber and protein rich meal. For lunch, make sure you have a fiber and protein rich meal. Throw some veggies in there, throw some meat, eggs, other high protein foods, and otherwise treat it like any other day. Yes, I understand the weekends might bring things like pancakes and other foods with your family. So go ahead and have some of those foods. But at the same time, try to prioritize all of your meals around protein, and fiber because those foods are going to help keep you full they're going to help regulate your appetite and anytime you can regulate your appetite with solid nutrition it's going to be a lot easier to go into those restaurant meals not feeling absolutely obsessed or overly hungry and anytime you feel overly hungry you are likely going to again obsess around food or eat more than you actually need all right let's jump into tip number five which is know your portions ahead of time while I have nothing wrong with digging into the bread basket at a restaurant, I also like to know my portions because if I just endlessly eat bread, I'm gonna add up the calories really fast before I even get close to being full. So know your portions going into your meal. If you know you're gonna get a bread basket or you know you're gonna get some chips, set a portion aside for yourself and stick to that portion. You can still socialize and be a part of the group without eating the food that's given to you before you even get your entree. I promise you nobody cares that you're not eating as many chips as they are. And if they do care, that's not your responsibility either. All right, tip number six. Whatever you do, don't skip meals. Like I had alluded to in tip number four, skipping meals or fasting as the cool kids like to call it only makes your appetite stronger, which makes trying to resist overeating a lot harder to do when you're out at a restaurant. So even though fasting will help you save calories from an appetite and an eating behavior standpoint, fasting is actually making the problem worse. So go back to tip number four, have solid meals before you go out to a restaurant and you should be good to go. All right, tip number seven. This one's gonna feel a little antisocial, but I promise you it's not. Eat before you go out to a restaurant. Seems kind of counterintuitive and maybe even a little stupid, but here's why it's important. If you eat something relatively close to the time you're gonna go out to a meal, you don't go into your restaurant meal absolutely starving. I'm not telling you you have to have a Thanksgiving meal before you go out to a restaurant with your friends and family, but I am saying have a little something beforehand so that when you get to the restaurant, you're not reaching for the bread basket or the chip basket endlessly. Yeah, sure, you can have a little bit here and there, but anytime you let hunger make the decision for you, it's gonna be very hard to portion the amount of food you eat at a restaurant. Because you gotta remember, food at restaurants come in huge portions, not normal portions. So if you're not absolutely starving before you go out to eat, you're gonna have a much better relationship with that meal, and you're gonna have a lot easier time not trying to fight food obsession and your appetite screaming at you to eat. So again, not saying you have to have a whole entire big meal, but have a little something beforehand so your appetite isn't completely out of control when you go to that restaurant. All right, tip number eight. Is that eight? Yeah. Tip number eight. This one has been my favorite of all time because it's really easy to implement. I call it the half and half rule. Eat half of your meal at the restaurant, save the other half for later. The reason why this is super useful and why I found it to work really well is because you get to eat what you ordered, but you're also being reasonable about the portions. Remember what I said about restaurant portions being out of control? That's 100% true. Have you ever been to a restaurant where the portion they gave you was not enough? Unless you're eating at some fancy restaurant where the steak is this big for $120, you probably don't eat your entire meal at the restaurant. And maybe you already do this. Maybe you already take the leftovers for home. Keep implementing that rule, but now make it a rule before you get to that restaurant. Whatever I order, I will eat half, take a break, give yourself some time to talk, socialize, be a part of the group and not just be stuffing your face. And if you're still hungry, have a little bit more. If you're not, save the rest for later. I've had many clients that hate throwing away food. And so this rule really works well for that as well. Even if you don't eat the food later on when you put it in your fridge, at least you're saving yourself the calories that you weren't hungry for anyway. One time I even saved half and then gave the rest to someone who was homeless outside because I wasn't gonna eat it and I didn't want to go to waste. So while I totally understand that food waste can be top of mind, especially if you paid a pretty penny for it, there's always a way around not eating when you don't actually feel like you're hungry and you're just eating out of guilt for not throwing the food away. Before I leave, I just wanna say, don't feel like you have to implement all eight of these tips. My best advice for you is pick one that sounds really easy to do from the start and just work on that one. Not all of these tips are gonna be best for every single person. The reason I created eight is because they're gonna work for lots of different people. Maybe number two works really well for you. Maybe number six works really well for you. Hell, maybe number eight is the only one that works well for you. The important thing is, is these are different ways to think about eating out 
and avoiding overeating. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And in the comments, let me know which tip you like the most. And last but not least, if you enjoyed today's video and you're not already a subscriber and you would like to be a subscriber, don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you leave. Thanks a ton for watching this video. I really do mean that. I'm grateful for every single person who takes time out of the day to watch my videos. So thank you again for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in a future video. Thank you.